Lord, just again, another opportunity. Lord, it is, Father, it's your heart we want to hear today, Lord. And fresh, Lord. And Father, just thank you, Lord, that the uh, whole world's transformed, Lord. Everything about you is transformed, Lord. And Father, I just pray that today, Lord, that I would catch, Lord, your heart and relay your heart. And Father, just thank you for this assembly to the body here today. And Father, just bless them, Lord. Uh, we thank you, Lord. Just give us ears to hear, Lord. Just um, help us to be just, Father, to receive the part that we need to receive today, Lord. Myself included, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, uh, before I start, I saw a video recently for me, anyway. The Lord recently brought me into a place of sort of vulnerability again within myself before. I'm just a couple of things happened in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel the Lord was starting to speak to me about the whole element of how His strength is created in our weakness. Mm -hmm. You know, because a certain thing happened to me recently where I felt as if, if you, if you think of Paul when he, when he said about where he was buffeted by Satan, if you remember, but the word buffet means that you're, it actually means to wrap of the fist. So it's like, but you know, God was allowed Paul to get wrapped in the fist because it was keeping him, it was keeping him humble, it was getting revelations. But for all of us, there's, there's an element that sometimes when God comes and you knows God and you, you feel you get wrapped, it's like, I, I, I just feel that like God is speaking, this, this, this body is feeling that God's going to take us and they have place a greater from the body. With him and with one another. So the message I bring today is really, it's about strength through weakness. You know, because the thing about it is, he's already visited our greatest weaknesses. You know, when Jesus, that's why I did something to start off with. You know, see, he made him, you know, first of all, I'll say this, you know, they expect when Jesus came, they thought, he was going to come in a victorious, triumphant army and, and get rid of the Roman uh, dictatorship, if you like. And it was going to be a, a great yeah, Rahu of putting him, exalting him as king, king of the Jews. But no, Jesus came. He came in weakness, didn't he? He came in humility. And you know, he died in a place of vulnerability on the cross, in the most vulnerable, exposed place he could die. You know, it's one of his disciples betrayed him, another one denied him. You know, and all the time you get a call upon the resources of heaven. But you know, in that place of weakness, you know the great exchange. In that place of weakness, he produced strength for us in our place of weakness. But you know what? We have to be able as people of God to visit our greatest weaknesses. I'm feeling quite vulnerable here this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, because God's sort of visited one of my places of weakness. You know, I feel a little exposed, but I still I feel the grace of God upon me. I feel the empowerment of God. I'm not afraid. You know, because God wants us to be, you know, in the very beginning of the garden, Adam and Eve, it says they were naked and they were unashamed before God. Now the thing is, I'm talking about the body here. You, the reason that was because there was no comprehension of self. You see, we have to start in the garden because, you know, God has never given up on his design for humanity. You know, God's not moved by what Satan does. So God's design for, for humanity was to, you know, be in communion with him and to have dominion on the earth. And the thing is, in the garden, we as humanity were naked and we were unashamed. So, and God has shown me that, you know, there was no concept of self. You see, self detaches you and individualizes you. So today I sit here and I feel it's how vulnerable because, you know, you're looking up to me. God sort of, maybe, you know, he's, he doesn't want to be speaking and sometimes God does that and then he does something the week before <laughs> in that area. So I, Maybe operate out more fully. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting here, you know, and we can have all these feelings of self-awareness. If you look at the dictionary itself, like self-awareness, 
self-abuse, self-harm, self-conceit, self, you know, it's just it, page upon page of it. I'm going somewhere with this. Now, in the garden, there's no comprehension self. They were in a place of enclosure with God. Where, and God showed me, this gave me a revelation one time, years ago it was, of what it's like, in a sense, with a gappy love. When a gappy love really touches you, like you feel as if you have no concept of the boundaries of it. It's like you're wrapped up in him. It's like it, it just it disregards that. And then you feel so complete. You feel complete. I was to do the righteousness of God. It was just showing me this I see you. I see you complete. And I felt how he saw me. It was complete. But that's because I was in him. There was no separation. Right? So that's the way God intended it to be. But the greatest enemy of the cross is self-nature. Mm -hmm. And Jesus taught this. Now, it's funny, I want to just go back. Because, you know, Jesus came. This is a gospel that a lot of people turned away from, but this is the gospel. You know, Jesus saves, he heals and delivers. But there's a, there's a message with the cross that says, take up your cross. It says, deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow me. Those three things. I just want to turn to that to start off there. It's good this, because you know what, I'll tell you today, this is liberating. <coughs> if you catch this, honestly, you know, this is truly liberating. You talk about transformation, this is the greatest place, I believe, of transformation. And I know uh, Harvey spoke on the Penile thing about Jacob, it's exactly the same with Jacob. See, Jacob came to the place where he had to face who he really was. He had to go to his place of greatest weakness in the flesh. He was, he was, a, he was a deceiver, wasn't he? But God had to get him to a place where he had, he was fearful enough of what was ahead to actually cry out to God to visit that place. So, God wants to get to a place of greatest weakness. Well, you know what a place of greatest weakness is? A place of weakness sometimes is a place where the self is the greatest strength. It will always oppose the cross. So, this is what we're going to look at nine, first of all. I know it's a bit, it's probably, it's, it's, I don't know how you make this, I like to speak to you a bit of light at times, but this is not really a light message. But I just pray that I can deliver it in a way that the spirit of it liberates. I believe that you know, the Lord wants to liberate us through this message. But it doesn't, it's not, this is, you know, it can, it's not a burden if you catch what I'm saying. Because you see, I'm going to, first I'm going to read that, I'm going to read that to where I started for Hebrews, or 2 Corinthians 12, I'm going to start with that, I passed it, that section on Paul, it's quite important this. And I may even turn to the passion, I think I will, because it's so... It's, I mean, I use, I'm a King James man, or New King James, I love that in study, but some of them are translated, that passion translating, what is just it's so heartfelt. You know, and, you know, sometimes we hear the Word of God, and we, uh, it's like, oh, I know that scripture, or we just, we don't quite hear what it's saying, because <laughs> we've almost conditioned ourselves to hear it a certain way. So sometimes in our translation just, Helps you know you see it from a slightly different angle in a, in a more modern language, and you sort and it is quite I feel, I feel it's a real heartfelt uh, translation. So he brought in Corinthians transformation, transformation, right? So we all want to get who wants a power button, right? What's all about? Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have the, I want to see the, I want to see the signs, wonders, and miracles. But I want the power of my life just in the day to day. I want to pray for my kids when they're sick and see them. You know, heal. Not that they don't get healed sometimes, but I don't see enough. You know, and I believe that there's something God. There, there's something that we really need to take on board. And I was, I was at the very start. You see, it's about total surrender. The cross is about total surrender. It's about finding that place. You know, it's about honesty to God first and foremost. You have to get before God and find a place of honesty. If you don't communicate with God, 
first and foremost. And you know, look at David. He was so horrified. He, so, he poured out. But he didn't pour out in, in a hopeless way. You know, he never read, read the Psalms. You know, it was just, yeah, I will praise you. You know, he would pour his heart out. And you know what? God loves that. He says to man for God's own heart. We, as people of God, first and foremost, above all else, have to find that place of honesty with God. That's true. You know, God's not. Put up. He loves it. You know what God that does, though? A place of honesty. It allows God to get into those deep recesses of your heart. You see, we're still playing. You know, there's a lot of us in the body of Christ. Look. It says, right, go back to Genesis here. Just go to Genesis 2 every minute. I haven't finished with this just before you fall. Because it's quite important to realise a couple of things. And this is where sometimes we find ourselves. You know, because God still wants us to be naked and unashamed before Him. In other words, you're naked. Look, God, search my heart. Lord, show me. You know, there's a desire for truth in the inward parts. You know, God, I want to be free from all this. Why am I to liberate from self-consciousness? I want to liberate it from this beast. You know, that, that from other people's uh, validation. I don't need to come in here. You know, the Lord said to me today, you know what, Tom? I haven't got a message coming up here in the car. And the Lord says, what's the worst thing that can happen to Tom? You know, are you worried about what they think about you? If you get it wrong, if you fall flat on your face in here today, and you haven't got anything to say. You see, does it really matter? I, I, I don't come in here to look for that. But you know what? We have to break free from that. I have to break free. See, God accepts me. And that's enough. You see, if I look for your acceptance, I'll always be trying to do things to look for it. And that's a problem. We have to get away from that. If I fall flat on my face, you know what? I can walk and say, Thank you, Lord, you accept me. God doesn't want me falling flat on my face. But in my being, as I come up in that car, I have to say, and God does this more and more upon me. He leaves messages later. And if I have to speak, sometimes it's really late. And it's like, Oh, God. God, why are you doing this to me? Like, but you know what? God doesn't want me being strong myself. God wants to pour through us in a place of weakness. And as I say, what's the worst case scenario here today? You know, that I, that I can't fulfill this, you know? And, and what was all about? Is it about me walking out here feeling, I really nailed it there. It's all about Is it me trying to float my boat? No, it's not. It's about me dying and letting him, you know, we're earth, it says we're earth and vessels, doesn't it? Worth it for clay pots. We can say we are clay pots. Mm -hmm. And the treasure, the glory of God resides in us. You know, we're fragile. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to realize that before God, we are weak and fragile. Mm -hmm. But we're glory carriers. Mm -hmm. That's the other side of it. You know, and when we find that place where we acknowledge, you know what? God, I, 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 love, I love my vulnerability before you. I love that place of weakness, God, where I can bear my soul to you. And then I find that he's visited that place. Because it says, and we hear this, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. The greatest place of strength is in your greatest weakness. Now we hear this now. Oh, we're going to go here, uh, first of all, Genesis 2. So, Genesis 2, verse 25, as it says, it says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So, forget the, the flesh side of that. They were naked in the spiritual sense we're looking at this. So there's no shame. There's no guilt. You know? Because sin hadn't entered in. So then we go on down, we know they ate the apple, etc. And then it says in verse 10 of chapter 3, So he said, this is Adam speaking, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. So the three things that the self-nature did to mankind It is fearful. Because we're detached from God now. The individual's born. You know what I'm saying? And it made us shameful. We felt ashamed. Because sin does that. It makes you feel ashamed. Because shame makes you hide. That's where the power comes in sin. When you hide your sin. That's why it says in the Bible that 
you care, share your burden, share your burden, confess your sins to one another. You see, not only do we have to get to a place of vulnerability with the Father, then we have to get to a place of vulnerability with one another. Not so you just pour out on Instagram, it's, you know what? Because that, in a sense, is the opposite. Because they think in the vulnerability there's strength, but no, without Christ there is no strength in it. But God wants us to get to a place where we can be, where we're not superficial church. But you see, you can't visit that place unless you visit it with Him first. And you find that place of girding up. Or you know, where God's like to find that place of weakness in your life. And then you, out of that place where you find him girding you up in your weakness, you can go to your brother or sister who's struggling and you can find that place in conversation where you can plumb the depths a little bit. You see, God is taking his people deeper. If we don't go deeper, you see there's always more in God. If we don't go deeper as a body of believers, see that the apostles' church, they don't have things in common. How do you think that happens? Folks. They knew each other. They knew each other. Then it says in the next person, great grace was upon them, power was upon them. Then people knew each other, but they didn't just know each other like trivially. It says they had all things in common. And if anyone lacked, they gave to each other. They really loved each other. And they had to know each other intimately to be able to do that. So you see, right? I was afraid to fear. But when we, when we look, when self will always make you afraid because it actually detaches you from everything else. It's like an island. So what? Uh, I was naked and I hid myself. It'll cause you to hide. God doesn't want us hiding because sin finds strength in the hidden place, in the closet. Not the closet, God's closet, the other closet mm -hmm. where we hide. Because you know why? We're ashamed. And God wants to deal with shame in the body of Christ. But you're not ashamed anymore. You know what? We all sin. Mm -hmm. Don't be sitting here and tell you mm -hmm. how I've blown it. I have feeling questions. I don't mind feeling questions any time. Because you know what? You'd be surprised. You, sometimes you look on the surface and you think, oh, he's got it together or she's got it together. But you know what? We all fall. It says a righteous man shall fall seven times. The word of God says, but it gets back up again. Mm -hmm. You know, but we have to, you know, the enemy has the body of Christ hammered sometimes because they think, you know, I've fallen and I'll, I'll not be accepted. People will reject me if I, if I tell them what I'm really like. But no, God wants to deal a death blow with that. Mm -hmm. So that the body of Christ actually develop a compassion for one another on a greater level. Yeah. You see, it's there. We're dying to do it. We're dying, we're looking for that expression. But you know, there's a responsibility in each one of us to actually find that place. You know, we have to let our guard down a little bit. We have to ask the hard questions. You see, good knowledge last night was, I said to Alison, you know, something's missing on those sins, right? You see, it was good, a good time, but you know when you have that bit of fellowship where you, have the, where you worship, where you have a bit of prayer or something, you know, it's good and all that. If we just met, it's good to have a barbecue, but if we just met like that all the time, we don't always, we have to find that place where we get below the surface a little bit. And we learn to trust each other. I know it's, I know it's a growing thing, but listen, that's a place of freedom. And it's a place of accountability in a good way. It's where God's taken the church. It has to go there. Otherwise, we'll just carry on, you know, in a, in a sort of, you know, just... Just on the surface, you know, because we're going, we're going somewhere and we have to go deeper. And there has to be, as God's way, strip some stuff away. We have to, and we have to believe that that's for our best. Right, so moving on, my grace is sufficient for you. 2 Corinthians 12, verse, uh, let's go start at verse 7. Verse 7, uh, unless I should, right, okay, so here, here's Paul that's. Okay, he's, uh, he's getting lots of revelations, as we know, but just forget about that for a minute, because at the same time, it'll happen to people in equal measure, you know, because God's doing, some people say the thorns and flesh and all the rest that could have been, infirmity means actually, the word infirmity means feebleness and weakness or sickness, so we don't really know the thorn and flesh, I'm not going to get into the thorn and the flesh and what it was, but you know, we know it says clear here, there was a buffer, uh, it was buffeted, I'm going to start at verse 7. It says, Unless I should be exalted above measure, that's 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. 
by the bonds of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. You see, God had to keep his old man, that self-nature, at to death, he had to keep putting it to death because Paul, you know, we <laughs> we get bummed up, we get blown up, we get inflated. People come around us and say, Oh, those powerful words you shared, they're amazing. Wow. You know, and some of that gets in there. And <laughs> so God was just keeping that thing, you know, just I want you to just be, you know, just remember it's not you, boy, oh, it's me who's doing this. So that's why he was, you know. I would say a uh, wrap of the fist buffer. I like that feeling. A wrap. I can say that in the strong, you know. Mm-hmm. Wrap of the fist. So anyway, so concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me, and He said to me, "My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness." Powerful scripture. Mm-hmm. See, we don't have to have it together. Because he has it together, do you understand me? We can fall apart. The you know, Lord sends me on the way up. You know what, Colin? People just, my people just learn to actually fall apart. You know, they don't realize what my grace is really like. You know what I mean? But we're always trying to support the old man's whole oh, You know, brought ourselves up, you know, make our life more comfortable. God, you know. Fear again, same fear that came out of the garden. Yeah, perfect love casts out all fear. So moving on, therefore most gladly I'd rather boast in my. So here, here, here he says, my strength is made perfect in weakness, or my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore most gladly I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches. In needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, in the natural mind, he can't engage with that. But when the power of God's flowing through his life, it, none of those things matter because he's flowing in God. He's not flowing in self. All those things are used to keep. All those things that are common are actually used to actually suppress self within him. Mm-hmm. They're used to buff itself so that Christ can be an exalt within us. So I want to go back now to Luke 9. I just want to read that first because. Is this helping? Mm-hmm. It's hard. <laughs> Luke 9, verse 23. And it's mentioned in three of the Gospels. This has to be important. Because at three separate times in the gospel, the exact same passage is said. The only other time that happens is in the crucifixion. Mm-hmm. So it says in verse 23, oh, I have to go back. I have to revisit, sorry, I forgot about something. Because I want to read that out in the Passion. That's like, it's so nice, it's so, it's so beautiful. Passion, sorry, I'm using my, for good purposes, of course. <laughs> Second Corinthians. Me, my grace is always more than enough for you, 
And my power finds its full expression through your weakness. So I will celebrate my weaknesses. How about that? That's no way of looking at it. God can't run the flesh. Can I? John the Baptist says, I must decrease and you must increase. You want more of God, you have to die. He says, My grace is more than enough for you, and my power finds its full expression through your weakness. So I will celebrate my weaknesses. Um, <laughs> every lot of time we're running away trying to cover up our weaknesses trying to prop them up right. when God says just you know let me in there, let me deal with those let, let, let me show you how I've already visited your weaknesses on the cross and I have empowered strength at the very seat of them so I'll celebrate my weaknesses for when I'm weak I sense more deeply the mighty power of Christ living in me. I have some anointing on me today. You know why? Because you know what? I don't have anything to say in here today. <coughs> I'm totally hopeless in my own efforts. And you don't want to hear it. So I'm not defeated by my weakness, but delighted for when I feel my weakness and endure mistreatment. When I'm surrounded with troubles on every side and face persecution, because of my love for Christ, I am made yet stronger. For my weakness becomes a portal to God's power. Amen. 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 How many of you believe what I'm saying? Uh, he's getting what I'm saying. Is it, is it helpful? Yes. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to go back to that. I'm going to go back to Luke 9 here. This is, I'll tell you something today. Look. This is a primary teaching around the cross. If you don't get this, you don't, you know, we can, you can do, look, you can get to Romans 12, I'm a living sacrifice, you can meditate in the Word day and night, but if you don't allow God into those places with the pit of honesty, see, I know guys, look, I know guys who walk around the streets, bombing people with the Word of God, they can't wait to get out of their mouth, you know, they're not listening to what God's saying, there's no compassion in their hearts. Because they don't know the Father. They, they, they're reciting the Word of God. They're reciting the Word of God. But God wants us to be a people that get His heart. Yeah. That's what the weeping and prophecy is all about. It's about engaging with His heart. So that I, I don't have to always be talking. I don't always have to be bringing the Word. I don't always have to, you know, we don't always have to be the one, you know, trying to, you know, win people. He win people. We have to have bowels of compassion for people. It says in Luke 9, Luke 9, verse 23, and as I said, this is the third time. How am I doing for time? Do I get me off? Okay. But we need to learn. You see, the thing is, you know what? This is beautiful. Yeah. You see, sometimes we look at it in a twisted way. We think, God, you see, it's a beautiful place God wants to take us, a place of victory. You see, the self is what trips us up all the time. You see, offense. You know, Paul said, look, Galatians 3, 20, it says, not I live, but Christ lives within me. You see, if I'm dead, if I decide that my old man's dead, I can't get offended. You see, we have to decide. It says, take up your cross in this life and deny yourself. And you know what deny means? Abstain from you know what abstain means? If you abstain from drink, you're not going to take one. Mm -hmm. Abstain from completely. Mm -hmm. I'm not putting any confidence, I'm not saying me personally, but you make a decision. I'm putting no confidence in the flesh. Mm -hmm. It's not I who live, but Christ who lives within me. So every time you see the need to prop up self, say I'm not doing that, because it says, mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 5, you know what, it comes the Holy Spirit, you're bought with the price. These are some scriptures, hard scriptures that we need to establish in the body of Christ. If you want to make real progress, you're bought with the price, your life is not your own. Therefore glorify God, put God in your body. Now, far too often, too many rights. Stop always justifying what you do. You know what, what if you just became a doormat? Would God be able to keep you? No. Yeah, it would. Mm -hmm. Would it? Yeah. I would want to be a door now. Well, you know 
saying, when I say a doormat, it's that let someone serve you in injustice. Mm-hmm. And you know what that does? It actually, you know what that does in that moment? That's putting your old man, that's putting the death blow in. Mm-hmm. See, your rights work. <laughs> what about me? See, all the time you're justifying me, you're building that altar within yourself. What does that altar do? As we've already seen in Genesis, it separated you from God. You understand? All the time, every time you justify yourself right, right? Every time you don't need to, he's able to justify you. I'm telling you, just try it. Just listen, you've tried the other way, have you? Yes. <laughs> right, we all have. But listen, I, I, I challenge you for six months to turn the other cheek. Right. Right? And see what happens. You know what happened? Yes, Lord, I'm on your case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what you're doing, you see? Remember I said, listen, this is it. Jesse, is it alright? The thing is, look, remember in the garden I said that the self and the individual separated from God. You were, you were in God at that point. Now the reality is we're in Christ Jesus. We're in God now. The spirit and reality is we're in God. But every time you prop self up, every time you prop self up, you're giving strength to that detachment. You're separated from well, God again every time you justify yourself. You say, you know what? Is he able to keep you? How dare you put it to the test? You see, that's what very this look now. See, a doorman. Do you always get this right? You no. talk about the doorman there. I don't want to be a yes man all the time. Be a yes man to God all the yes, time. Yes, no, man. So, no. When I say doorman, I'll tell you what I'm saying, right? Uh, <coughs> sorry about that. It's just coming off. I just turned down. Uh, right, okay. Doormat's moving the wrong. Okay, doormat's moving on the wrong. There's maybe the wrong expression that's maybe coming across wrong to you. Let's put it another way. Uh, right, the next time someone wrongs you uh, and you feel as if your rights are challenged, it says you're bought with the price your life is not your own work. And listen, this is fundamental. This is really important. Because all the time we keep trying to prop self up, mm-hmm. it separates us from God more. It gives that individual more strength. And we need to get to the place where a gap in love is flung. So if you learn to surrender and deny and die daily, which God wants us to do, <coughs> you get all those things, you know, selfless, you know, it's a death, it is a death. But then you see, and we'll read this out first, and then you'll see what I'm talking about, right? Look nine. Verse 23 says, now don't forget, it says three times in the gospel, it says three separate occasions, it's mentioned. Uh, it says, then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, I mean, abstain completely, right? Take no, no, uh, break off all relations with. Come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me for whoever desires to save his life will lose it. So you're trying to save your life, let's stop there. You're trying to save your life when you defend your rights. Yes. But if you want to find the life of Christ, you've got to give up your rights. Right. And when you give up your rights, you're going to come into the anointing. Right. Yes. Tell me, that's a fact. I dare you to do it. You see, we have to get away from the milk. We have to start doing what the Word of God says. These are these are hard words, but you know what? This is liberating stuff. Stop propping up that old man and kill you every time. Every time, Trevor. Now, we want this life, don't we? Forever. Forever desires to save his life or lose it. See, you save your life when you don't by the name of Jesus, and that's the they lose their life and end up. But it says, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. So you actually, your life you see is found in Christ. And it's found in the footsteps of Christ and only there. See, you walk the road as he walked it. Philippians 2 says, he, we read that as well, I have to read that. 
you know, and it sort of knocks you back a wee bit, sort of you recoil a wee bit, and I could feel it like, you know, I knew it, it sort of took a hit. And uh, so I went away and I sort of thought about it, and I couldn't hear God in that moment, I couldn't hear God and sitting there asking about it. I knew that, I knew it taken a hit, but you see, I took in a hit in a place of weakness. You know, there was still a rest of you. You see, we think we're free from all, but <laughs> then God revisits I here, you know. I've done a work there, but you know, coming back to do a greater work. You know, and there's, there's always more. You know, there's more, and that's okay. I'm not knocked over by it, you know. You know, I'm not affected the same as it would have been 10 years ago, because 10 years ago I might have walked. You see, rejection, when you get impacted in that place of rejection, it says to you, we don't want you. You're not good enough. It's the message it sends to you and the flesh, but if you can't climb out of that and get into the place where you're accepted and beloved, you're going to actually fall foul of it. Because it's your old man again, so you have to realise what's happened here. It's an emotional thing. I get hit emotionally, and then your emotional start, your emotion, you know, chain, you know what I'm saying? It's starting to get out of control. It starts to sort of, it starts to fuel your thoughts, and then it's like, God, where are you in this? What are you saying here? What's happening? You feel a wee, but I understood that. I understood that, and I just had a little settle a wee bit. I got asked to pray for me, and you know, I sort of. How did I do that? Yeah. But you, yeah. And that's a place of weakness, you see. But you know what? I. Or you or anybody, we can't be afraid of letting God. God wants to impact us here because He wants to sometimes reopen things because mm -hmm. He wants to do a work in them. He wants to make that place where I no longer was actually, you know, where I could actually turn it around and not let it. It wasn't going to knock me off page. You know, when people said things like that. It was, it was going to impact me. I was impacting my flesh. I was impacting myself. To be honest, you see, at that moment, I could make a decision of. Spend days with that. Okay, you might take you might take a few minutes to get over it or a few hours or whatever, but you know what? Don't stroke the, the ego. Don't stroke that place where you've been, you know, where you're emotionally rejected. We have to allow God to come into that place and, and bring the healing balm of Gilead, you know what I'm saying? We have to because that's where, you know, he has visited that place of, of, of your greatest weakness where, yes, you have been hurt in the past and, yes, you have been legitimately rejected. But you know what? We can't hide it. Yeah. And say, oh, just come along. Oh, God, I didn't have it. Can you just put something up? Just go. God just wants us to do that. He wants me to say, God, you know what? That was, you know, I took a hit there, Lord, and I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm letting you, I'll allow you, I'll give you free access to that area, Lord, if there's, Memories, I think back in my childhood and some of the things that happened, you know, <clears throat> it hurt, you know, but the thing is, we have to forgive. Mm. Yes. We have to keep forgiving those moments again. We have to say, Lord, even if you've forgiven that person 10 times or 100 times, you have to say again, Lord, you've revisited this area. And I just, I released those people in the past, even that spoke words over my life when I was a child or ever spoke negatively over me. Right, or any one of us. We have to say, I forgive that, I release that to you, Lord, to allow him to heal those areas again. So that you know why? Because it, so the enemy can't always boom hit us in those same areas and just and make us dysfunctional. You see, if we, if we don't allow God to heal those areas of weakness, then the enemy has you every time. He knock you over. Yeah. Knock you over. So if you allow God every time that he, something's opened up and you see it, you know, that's why we need each other though as well. I'm lucky I can turn I can see Alison look, take a bit of a hit there and you pray with me or just maybe get a hand on what's going on there and she pinpointed it. It was I was, you know, that uh, that felt rejection stuff and I, I and I was there just to trying to gauge what's happened here. Is it something to me or what I would just try to get a handle on it. So but we, that's where we need each other though too, and I believe you know God's gonna visit some of these areas and we have to be uh, we have to be unafraid, you know, we have to get away from that place where, you know, your opinion of me is something that validates who I am. You understand me? You know, whether you like me or don't like me, 
or tell me, oh, you're a good lad, or, you know, that it doesn't affect me. Mm -hmm. I'm not shaking by that. So you can't afford to be shaking. Because you know what? You go out there with the gospel. The power of God comes upon you. If you're easily moved by other people's opinions, you'll be all over the shop. Oh, so we have to allow God. Yeah. I'm going to read this Philippians 3. I'm going to get off a wee bit there, but there's a good, you know, I want to be honest. Philippians 3 says in verse. Uh, Again, this is just it's the same thing in a different coat, really. Uh, it's very challenging. <laughs> oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Uh, I go to verse 10, I think. Uh, um, or, and then, and then I'll just go to verse 7. It says, you know, it, it says, But what things were gained in me, these I kind of lost for Christ. In other words, again, this is the thing about he's. He's decided to deny Christ and or deny self, and he's finding that just, just you know, giving up that stuff about preserving self, yeah, and the ego, and you know, trying to crawl over life. You know, giving all that up, it's just he's just said he's kind of them as dumb. I he says in the King James, doesn't it? Kind of lost for the, for just to know Christ. You see, this this is a gateway to knowing Christ in greater measure. You know, because it, there's a, there's a capacity within us. And if you don't empty yourself, you know, God can't fill a full vessel. You know, we talk about more of you, God. God says less of you. Are you, are you going to yield? This is a season, I believe, of one receiving the glass and touch that. But I was saying, I may have seen it for a while. About It's a season of receiving of His grace. Leave that on. Um, that's from my motel, he says. Um, it's receiving because so often it's good to read the word and all this, but we need to get in that place where we receive more from God as His children. Just enjoying Him, I believe, the goodness of God, really enjoying God and, and being re receiving from Him. As a father, sometimes, you know, it's away from the works mentality of always, you know, because if you know you're accepted, you're not trying to win His approval. He already approves us. God already approves of us. I don't have to win His approval. It's, 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 it approves of me. You know, when I have to get that in my knower. Right, uh, that I may know him, as Paul said, right, I'll go back in where it was, but what things were lost, these I've kind of gained, these I've kind of lost for Christ, yet indeed I also kind all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and kind of this rubbish that I'm in mean, Christ. This is his experience. So I'm telling you, this can be your experience as well. You, in comparison, you know, the self life just is like a, a, a mere, like a, like a worm. And he found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. That I may know him, there is the man that they get to, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, oh dear, being conformed to his death. If any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. So, you know, he suffered infirmity, <coughs> shipwreck, all these different things, but all those things God was using to. That was, but we have to engage in the process. Sometimes we can look at that and in the natural it seems like, oh, I, I, I couldn't, I, I can't count, so I, 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 I can't, it's too weak. But whenever, this, whenever in that place of witness the strength of God rises up and the anointing of God and we start yielding to the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the power of God supersedes all of that. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. It says, for the joy that he set before me endured the cross. So, I don't know how much more I'm saying here with this, to be honest. Uh, I just really encourage you to go away, right? Alison's right with that. The Lord has been speaking to me with the phone. That's great, and I use it a lot for looking at the Word. But, you know, I think we're entering into a season of, you know what, really just closing it all down and just getting along with God, you know, again, and feasting on His Word and just. You know, let's find, I believe, you know, the Lord really wants us as a people to find Him again, encounter Him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not going to happen 
Uh, okay, God can just turn up like the Damascus Road experience, but we can cause it to happen as well by the attitude and how we turn our hearts to Him. And it's about getting into the closet, about shutting off all the distractions. Because I know right well, it's not the same when I have communion with God. I'm sitting in my car and I'm the phone and there's a, there's a alert goes through and a message. I'm just so prone. Just wonder who that was there. Just, and that, just in that very moment, communion is broken with Him. But I just say to you, Lord, that you're, you're more important than that. We live, we live without those years ago, don't we? You know, well, the thing is, good knowledge it is, or laptops, or whatever, they're good knowledge they are, just to get alone with God and say, Lord, you know, and just just take that scripture, look, it's a principal scripture. Say, Lord, what? I bought with the price when I stopped my own, and you're saying to deny myself, take up my cross daily and follow you. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a commandment. Lord, just let God just examine your heart and say, Lord, where am I not, you know, help me to deny self. Help me just to give up my rights, Lord. Show me what that means and that I don't have to, you know, some people, that's like self-dignity is another pillar. You know, all these things, they, they impede our ability to be abandoned to him. You know, even in worship, if you have self-dignity and all, and you think about what people think about you around you, they're, blocked, they're, they're all limiting your expression to him. You know, and we all, you know, it's a process. I, believe, I know it's a process, all this. But we want to be free, folks. You know what? It's, the Lord said to me in the way in here, when the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You see, we say that all the time. But when the Spirit of the Lord is in our lives and each of these years, are we experiencing freedom in all these Could I say to you today, are you really experiencing freedom from self? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you can, that's what I'm saying, you can. You just choose not to rely on it, and that dog dies more and more. I'm not relying on you. I'm going to choose to rely on him alone. I'm going to find a place of greater dependence upon him. This is transformation. That's the only place I come. I believe, you know. Yeah, you can meditate in the Word, and of course, the Word of God. We need the mind of Christ. That's that's all important to do all that. But if we don't, if we don't have doing it for the right reasons, if you think that meditating on the Word of God. The greatest enemy you have is the flesh, your own self, because the enemy's trained it. The enemy doesn't need to turn up in our lives because he's already trained our old man, so we have to put that dog to death. I talk about when we kiss the black dog and the white dog, which one are you feeding? If you feed the black dog, he's going to grow strong, and you feed the white dog, he's going to grow strong. So we have to choose, you know, and even with our eyes, you know, it's a challenge, but you know, we have to believe that's where the power comes from, you know? That's where the power comes from. And it comes from vulnerability, just by recapping this and finishing. Vulnerability, first of all, with God in the secret place. Where we can bear our soul, where we find that place of communication. You know, if we're not finding that place of where we can, and it's not about fancy words, it's about honesty of heart. God, you know, I really struggle with this. And I want you to visit that area, Lord. I want you to set me free from that, Lord. You know, find that place, because, you know, He's not. You know, a great high priest that says, I'm going to finish this last scripture, the Hebrews 2, I think it's 15, Hebrews 4, I'm going to check, it says, you know, he's so compassionate towards us, isn't it? Hebrews 2, 15 must be. I'm going to finish it here. I'm going to finish it Oh, I can't find that much. Oh, look, it's the one about, you know, as a, like because he's experienced humanity, you know, he's compassionate towards us, you know, nothing surprises God, you know, when we come in. But uh, we really do have to, you know, pour hearts out in a place of honesty in God and let him just get into those places of, because God loves, you know, God's really interested in the things that really, you know, that are terms, time, time. He doesn't want us to take that this morning all the time. It's not, that's not a good deal. But God can cope with that as well. <laughs> but, you know, he wants, I'm talking about it. It's about, you know, it's about honesty. It's so it's great. You find a place of honesty. Because when we find a place of honesty with God, we'll find a place of honesty with one another. And then we'll truly be able to care for each other as he wants us to. And then we'll become the body, the self. You see those walls that separate us? They're self, they're self walls. <laughs> oh, they are though. And when those walls come down, and we create a greater dependence on him, you're going to find the body of Christ, you're going to find the cement, the love, the cement. You're going to find so much closer within the body. 
But we all have a responsibility in that, that we allow those walls down, those pits to move, those things to hide behind, and we try to, you know, oh, what they do with that, they wouldn't really like me, it's a lie. It's a lie. You know what I mean? Get somebody in there, if you need help in a certain area, find somebody to confide in. Don't, really, don't, don't give that thing strength. Okay, bless you. Hallelujah. Roll Thank God. Yeah, just in here, I mean, because I think all that's where, if we don't take it to the Lord and let the Lord in, it all becomes a weight that we're not made to carry. Exactly. You know, and it just becomes exactly. a load on us. And it isolates you, because that's the end of it. It says that, but don't forget what I said. I said, to fear your shame and uh, the ran away ahead. You see, you hide. And you know, God doesn't want that, folks, does he? We have to realize, you know, that it's what he did for us, you know, and we're off for what? We all came to the cross. Nobody in this room thinks it's any greater than the other. The reason we came to the you know what? God made us, made us, and I want to say this, and I want to say this, we'll do something in here. just to be there. And you're going to and you're going to bless her. You know what? The Lord said to me, look, he made us inadequate. God made us to be inadequate, so we would depend upon him. So why are we trying to appear strong? Why are we trying to appear as if we're composed with God altogether? It's about him that's got it all together for me. I don't have to pretend I've got it all together, but he's got it all together. And when I find his strength, you know, in that portal of that mm -hmm. portal of his power. You know, when I find that place where I can be honest, be honest about my weaknesses, and I don't have to hide from you, you ask me a straight question. Well, I was going to do that today. I was going to come in here and say, I, I, I thought about it, saying, you know, I'm just going to open it up here and no holes barred. Mm -hmm. And I saw the kids and you know, if you want to ask me any question, we have to get to that place, folks, where we're not afraid of what you think of me. Or where I can be honest enough, you know, with my struggles. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't matter. You know, your responsibility is to still love me. But what if you don't? <laughs> you know, but the thing is, the box still accepted to him. Yes. And I'm really, and that's all that matters. You know, I always, so we always, you see, we, and in ministry is an art, and people get in the ministry, and, and the people, the demands of the people, you know, they're looking, but we must always be, realize that our acceptance is in him, and that he's pleased with us, and we please him above all else, you know, and that's what, that's where our validation has to come from, that's why we have to get before him, that's why we have to find that place of vulnerability, and we have to know, we have to have that assurance, my daddy loves me, nothing's going to change that. 